eight hours ago, I'd walked into an airline office in Mexico City and asked a clerk for a ticket leaving on the first plane for any place in the States. From his expression, it was no trick to realize he thought I was off my rocker. Finally, he told me there was space on a plane leaving immediately. I bought the ticket and I sent a cable to the Dana Hotel advising them of my arrival. Mexico had been fun, but even fun has a way of stopping. And when it does, take it from me, it's a warning to pack a bag and head for some other place. Over the hum of the motors, I began to make plans. Spend one day in the city the plane was headed for, then grab the short flight to New York, see some shows, and not look for trouble. I headed to claim my baggage and to make a reservation on the first flight leaving the next day for New York. And a man stopped me, flashed a badge that wasn't counterfeit. He told me not to worry about my baggage, that it would be sent directly to my hotel. I was to go with him. I wasn't to ask questions, because as he put it, he was in the dark. My one-man welcoming committee gave the driver the name and address of a city hospital. That'll be all, Joe. Mr. Lanyard, thanks for coming. I had a feeling I had no choice. Well, our reason for warning you is quite urgent. I'm Dr. James Warner, public health officer. Oh, How are you? How did you know where to find me? We called your hotel, learned you were due to arrive this morning. I was in Mexico City yesterday. Almost stayed there. In that case, we'd have come after you. I don't get it. Would you remove your jacket and raise your shirt sleeves? I, uh, suppose when this is all over, you'll explain, huh? It's an inoculation, Mr. Lanyard. A preventative for cholera. I was given a sterilized outfit, and Dr. Warner took me to another building. No matter where you go in the world, one thing is always the same. The morgue. The row of boxes always creates the same impression. In the middle of the room, I saw the outline of a body covered with a sheet. I wondered who it was, and if it was someone I knew. Keep yourself covered, touch nothing. You recognize this man? No. His name's Thad Morgan. You've heard of him. I've heard of him. Notice the features. Eyes sunken. Skin has lost its elasticity. Notice, too, how the skin has taken on a blue cyanotic tinge. This man died of cholera. Our gowns had been burned, and we'd been given a thorough scarring. I thought cholera had almost been wiped out. No, it's still with us and has been since the Dark Ages. Usually, it's found only in the backward countries of the world. Uh, why do you want me? You said you'd heard of that man. Tad Morgan? Sure. Used to be an old-time aide to Wells Jackman. You were responsible for Jackman's being deported from this country. That's right. Well, Jackman's back. And this time he's more dangerous than ever because he's not only carrying a gun, he's packing cholera germs as well. How do you know? That Morgan was found dying in an alley this morning. But before he died, he told us that he and Jackman were smuggled ashore six days ago. And? He died before we were able to learn where Jackman's hiding. And you want me to find him, huh? The police are trying, too. We've got to keep this quiet to prevent a city panic. But time is of the essence. Unless Jackman is found immediately, we might be faced with a cholera epidemic. Let's hope that Jackman can find his hiding to one place. I hope you're right. Hello, Jackman. Guess you didn't read the billboard. To all my fans, it's Uncle Jack. I'm not a fan. Oh, you saw the act? Did you like that bit about the mink where I say to the girl, listen, where baby... Where we talk? In my dressing room. Okay, quit acting. You're off the stage now. Where is your nephew? Like I already told you. He's one of them islands down the Caribbean. That's the way you say it, isn't it? He's in this city. How'd you know Wells and me was related? What's your name? Mark Lanyard. What do you know, Mike Lanyard? And you're doing it all over again. If I was you, I'd go fishing or something. You know, you've never been one of Wells' favorites. Where is he? 
I already told you, I don't know. Maybe you'd rather talk to the police. I tell her John's the same thing. Sure, when he left his folks and came here to America, he lived with me for a while. But I had to kick him out. He was too bad an onion. And I haven't seen him since. He needs help. You're the logical person to him to contact. Well, I ain't seen him. And I don't expect to see him. If I never see him again, it'll be too soon for me. You're lying. Well, think what you want to. But I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm leaving. You're going to have company. That's oh. Good. On the way to Phil Jackman's apartment, he kept repeating he didn't know anything about Wells. I had a feeling he was lying. Okay, so you're in my room. This is all there is to it, except the bathroom down the hall. What's behind there? Well, look for yourself. One look at Phil's son, and I knew he was sick. Very sick. It's my son, Jim. He's been a little under the weather the last couple of days. Oh, what's wrong with him? Don't know exactly. He... Muscle cramps, upset stomach. Just a cold, I guess. Have you heard of cholera? That's what the Indians get, ain't it? It's what your nephew has. If he's been around your son, he could have it too. <laughs> you must really be a nut on them detective magazines. Only a whodunit fiend would come up with bait like that. Wake him up. I want to talk to him. I told you, you don't feel so good. Jim. Jim, wake up. How is he? Jimmy, he's going to be all right? I've bad news for you, Mr. Jackman. Your son's dying. Dying? Why? How? He's only had a cold? Far worse than a cold, Mr. Jackman. Your son has cholera. We've done everything possible for him. I'm afraid he came to us too late. others at the city like Jimmy. Each of them thinking it's just a bad cold. You've got to tell me where I can find Wells. I hated his guts. I hated his guts ever since he came to my house. He's a filthy, no good, murdering swine. Where is he? Well, he and Fat Morgan come to my house about six days ago. They stayed for three days and then they left. And he was no different. Mean, vicious. I had to kill them, only I didn't have the nerve. Why didn't you call the police? Because I'm afraid of him. I'm afraid of him. He does everything he says. He says to my yell, copy, choppy down. I've got to find him. I've got to find him fast. Phil said he didn't know where to locate Wells. And with his son dying, I knew he was telling the truth. I had to start over again. Only time was running out. Finally, I got a break. Someone gave me the name of a girl, Lorna Mason. She was supposed to know him well. I headed for her place. Lorna Mason's house was one of those expensive brownstone numbers. She wasn't home. I decided to wait. I kept hoping that she was the key, that she would know how to reach Wells. Time was my problem, and I didn't want to waste it. Then I saw a car pull up at the curb. Miss Mason was going to have a visitor. Me. Yes? Miss Lorna Mason. Come back after I've had some sleep. We'll talk about it. Sorry I didn't hear you. Well, now, just the way you came walking in here makes me think you're a right, interesting kind of fellow. What's your name? Mike Lanyard. What's your business? A man by the name of Wells Jackman. 
Jackman. Not nearly as nice a name as Mike Lanyard. One of the Lanyards of Boston? No? Too bad. Fine family. Suppose we talk about Jackman. Suppose you tell me why. Lots of reasons. He's in this country illegally. He's dangerous. A man with that reputation? And you think I'd know him? Yeah. That's why I'm here. Who told you about me? You and Jackman. It's all over town. Didn't you know? No, Mr. Lanyard. If you're not out of my apartment in 30 seconds, I'm going to blow that nice-looking head of yours right off your shoulders. Jackman appealed to you so much that you commit murder to keep him? Who says it's murder? You walk in here uninvited, accuse me of terrible company. It just isn't done where I come from. All right, Lorna, if that's the way... I do wish you'd believe me, Mr. Lanyard, and stop trying to get the advantage. You have only 10 seconds more then you're going to be quite dead. It's too bad. You're such a fool, you know. Sunken eyes, blue cyanotic skin. Not gonna look good on you at all. And just what does that mean? Jackman has cholera. You better get yourself to a hospital. Cholera? But this is the United States. They don't have things like that here. Don't they? The next time you see him, ask him how he feels. I'll be back later to see what he said. Next, I grabbed a taxi and gave the driver the address of a pool room. It was a broken down place called Cupies. But actually it was a front, a meeting place for the underworld. I'd known QB a long time, and it was just possible he could help. That Jackman was a real man, Mike. Oh, I know he was a bad egg, but he was still a man. Yeah, but not the kind this country likes to have around. What an operator. I remember doing lots of jobs with the Jack. Well, he was as tough as a ten-penny spike, but what a man. QP, I want to find him. So you think I can help you? I didn't come down here because I had no other place to go. But I haven't seen the Jack since long before he was booted out of the country. But the rumble has it that he's back again. Uh, what about his boys? Oh, I'm straight now. That monkeys won't have no truck with me. Sure. What do you want, mister? I got the word you were a rough customer, Mike, but never knew these days you were scaring him to death. Maybe you'll wish I had. Call an ambulance. As the intern carefully examined the unconscious man, he looked worried. I had the feeling that the man on the floor had the same disease as Thad Morgan and young Jackman. Cholera. When Cupy heard the story, he wanted to cooperate, but he swore he didn't know the man on the floor. I wondered if he was telling the truth. he wanted everybody in the pool room taken to the county hospital. He was placing us all under observation. I noticed he tried to underplay his fears. I also noticed as they carried the man out, they left his face uncovered. The doctor hadn't even told the police that the man had just died. As soon as I got to the hospital, I headed for Dr. Warner's office. I wanted to know for sure what had caused the man's death. I'll let you know. Examine him yet? About to do so now. I'm having Dr. Reagan help me to perform the autopsy. When will you know if it was cholera? Soon. Where can I reach you? I'll be at this number. What about QP? We've placed him and the others found in the pool room in the observation ward, just in case it is cholera. Uh -huh. Do me a favor. Have the police run a check on the dead man. Find out who he is, if he was ever connected with Jackman. They're due to arrive soon. I'll get them on it and have them call you. Thanks. Oh, Lanyard. Yeah? How do you feel? How did you know if there's a change? You know, uh, 
If you'd slide that gun out of my reach, I think you and I'd get along just fine. Then maybe you'd even trust me. Okay. As I crossed the room, I had the feeling I was in for a surprise. I took one look in the drawer, and I knew I hadn't been wrong. It seems this little 38 is worth about uh, $50,000. You know, Mr. Leonard, you're a downright puzzle. I never dreamed you'd end up a man of means. All you have to do is stop asking questions. Why is Jackman so anxious to get me out of town? Now there you go again, mentioning people I've never heard of. Why don't you come off it? Why don't you get smart? Why don't you get smart? Why don't you take some of your own advice? Maybe I do know Jackman. Maybe I've even seen him. Maybe this is his dough. And if I were you, I'd take it and stop asking so many questions. Otherwise, you're going to lead a very short life. Hello? Just a moment. It's for you. Thanks. Hello? Mike, this is Dr. Warner. The man's death was due to cholera. Did you get his name? Russ Whitefield, 16 Terra Street. Russ Whitefield? Wasn't he one of Jackman's men? That's right. The police are on the way to Whitefield's place now. They think Jackman's holed up there. I'll be over. I have to go. Don't forget this. That much money might turn my head. Well, like I said before, honey, the Riviera is better than spending your days talking to pool room owners and broken down vaudevillians, especially when that job is going to end up having you measured for a suit of wood. Better change your mind. Honest, you better. It's too late for any of us to change our minds. Take my word for it, beautiful. See a doctor, quick. Terrace Street was near the waterfront. By the time I arrived, the police had gone through the apartment house with a fine-tooth comb, but they were too late. Jackman had left minutes before. The police cars went in different directions. They were surrounding the district, trying to find Jackman. Then I thought about Phil Jackman, and I remembered the threat Wells had made. It was a long shot, but worth a try. I headed for the burlesque house. If I was right, I would find Wells Jackman. Come on in, shall I? I thought it was the doorman. He always brings me a cup of coffee after the last show. Yeah? How do you feel? I'm feeling okay. The doctor gave me a shot. And like he said, I'm not getting too near people. What are you doing here so late? Jackman's on the loose. He knows I'm getting close. He knows I helped? Did you close the stage door? It was open. I left it that way. Then he's here. He's in the theater. Is there a phone around? Yes, on the other side of the stage. No. While you're going, he'll get me for sure. No, I helped you. You've got to help me. You're crazy. He'll kill you for sure. Get out of your clothes. What? Get out of your clothes. All right, you sit tight. If you hear a commotion, you can get to a phone, call the police. If you can't make it, run for the door. stage was dark, and other than a few drops, the stage seemed empty. If Wells was in the theater, he had to find me. He told Phil he would kill him if he helped the police. I was banking on Wells to keep his threat. Then I saw the night watchman. He was dead. Now I knew Jackman was hiding somewhere in the blacked out theater. All I needed was a lot of luck and a little more time. I started for the telephone, half a stage away. I had the feeling that somewhere in the darkness I was being watched. I tried to recognize anything that might be the outline of a person. I couldn't see a thing. When I was about 15 feet from the telephone, I ran out of time. And I wondered how much luck I had left. The knife had missed me by inches. If Wells Jackman hadn't been sick, the knife would have found the soft spot between my shoulders. Then I caught a glimpse of Jackman. I saw him reach for another knife. Normally, I don't duck a fight. The knife was one thing. 
Jackman was another. But when you add cholera to them, I figured the best thing to do was backpedal. Jackman's eyes looked like they were on fire. His breath kept coming in gasps. You might as well forget it, Jackman. Your pigeon just got away. No use your going after him. You're sick. You'd never make it. Then... Better let me take you to a hospital. It's your only chance. You've got cholera. sick. You can't talk. Your eyes feel like they're sinking into your head. is fast. It's hard to breathe. Don't you get a Jackman? You're gonna die. There's one thing that puzzles me. Jackman was no fool. When he found out what he had, why didn't he go to a doctor? He never knew. Most of them don't until it's too late. But he did try to cure what he thought was wrong with him. Oh, what do you mean? We found this in his coat. 